I don't know why you ever have to go to a gym. I don't have to go. You see, there are exactly 128 steps to the underground lab, and uh, up and down twice a day would equal to jogging about uh, two miles, I guess. Exclude Sundays and holidays, that would be exactly... <laughs> don't tell me. I've had more truth than I can manage lately. What do you mean, the additions of the program? Mm, yes. I didn't ask for those additions. Well, who did? Roth, I suppose. Well, what's on the menu for today? The four subjects. Roth's finally made his decision. Internal security here. Put me through to the general immediately. Yes? Let's go to Scramble, sir. Go ahead. What's the trouble? Someone has broken into the top secret files. Do you know what's missing? Two things, sir. The brain machine file and Dr. Krishna's project file. Then it's probably Krishna. Nobody else would connect those two files. If it is Krishna, he knows that his project is nothing more than a guinea pig to test the brain machine. How do you want me to handle this? Get Krishna. I'll have Saxon and his men secure the grounds and send my car. I'm coming back. business programs and uh, punishment for the subjects if they tell a lie, but how are we going to know if they tell the truth? Don't ask me, love. We get the money to do what we want to do, then we have to do some of the things the higher-ups want done. Why don't you give me a quick rundown on our four lucky winners? Okay, there's four out of 147 applicants, so they ought to be what we need. Well, Minnie Lee Parks, age 22, birthplace, Tennessee, one year of college, rated low academically, single, no previous marriage, no immediate family. Kind of cute. Kind of dumb, just my type. Well, she is. Judd Reeves, age 31, born in Pennsylvania. Truck driver, bartender, carpenter. Well, he's versatile. Army service, honorable discharge, no immediate family. Think he's kind of cute, too? Emery Neal, age 44, postgraduate work in seminary, contributing editor to various religious publications. Serious automobile accident two years ago. No immediate family. Willard West, age 26, father, medical doctor, mother, PhD in literature. IQ above 150, star athlete in high school, held no permanent position, and traveled since graduation from college five years ago. Inherited large estate when both parents were killed in a plane crash. No immediate family. Okay, if you'll get the lights, we'll start programming our subjects. What's all that about? Dr. Christner. <laughs> I think maybe you better cover the trace road.
Have you got enough men out there to stop Kirsten? I don't see how he can get away now, sir. What happened? You must have discovered our plans for his project. That's all I can figure. Saxon, get those files. I don't care what it takes. Yes, sir. Mobile three out. Send the chief to my office and call Washington. Tell the senator we've had an emergency. I'll be in touch with him as soon as I can. Take the general's briefcase inside. Yes, sir? The general wants the chief to report someone on the double in his office. We tie in on schedule? We can, but not without problems. What problems? Failsafe. It's a specially designed system. We can't bypass it. There's no problem if it's not activated. But if it is activated, the computers take complete control of both projects, the E-Box and CIC. In my opinion, sir, that's a very big risk.
Saxon to see you, sir. Send him in. Yes, sir. Were all the documents in Christner's briefcase? The documents are all here, sir. Now, what about Dr. Christner? I've already got the right team on Christner. They'll take care of it. Hello. Yes. But you don't understand. I've got to reach the senator. Is there any way I... No. No, I'll call him later. My secretary received a phone call. Krisner was trying to reach me. Krisner tried to reach you? When? This morning. Do you know where he is? He knows my work on the Environmental Committee, but I hope to God he doesn't tie me in with this. Frankly, I'm concerned now with whether we should stop the brain machine tests. No, we shouldn't stop anything, Senator. We're changing to our standby project, Dr. Roth. Well, do you think Roth suspects anything? No, he thinks his project was set up by the Environmental Committee. Then he doesn't tie you in in any way. Will this change mean you'll need more funds? Roth will. But we've got enough to handle it. Good. You know I'm sticking my neck out a long way, General, because I believe this country is riddled with enemies, inside and outside. Your machine may be the only defense. I certainly hope so, sir. You know, it's not vigilance anymore, General. It's surveillance. Eternal surveillance is the price of liberty. That's why I'm willing to go all the way with you. Thank you, Senator. Dear Senator, what I am about to write you is more horrible. General's office. Yes? Christner's dead, sir. Yes, sir. Fill out a special administrative transfer for Dr. Christner. He's been transferred. And send a memo of this to all personnel at ECC. Mr. Saxon, to see you, sir. I'll be there shortly. this project, sir. The subjects are all wrong for us. They're totally programmed for environmental research. You said yourself that it was dangerous. Otherwise, we would never have selected Christmas project. We're going with Rob. Oh, but that's impossible, sir. It won't work. Make it work. Welcome to the Environmental Control Center. You have a copy of regulations. Three things you must memorize. One, you are a member of a team. Two, 
You have access only to the E wing. You must not enter the area of other projects. You received the name tag, which you will wear at all times. You will not wear this in the E box. Three, truth is the most vital aspect of this program for which you have volunteered. You mean the whole truth? Yes. About everything? Yes. Golly. This experiment is going to get an X rating. <laughs> OK, calm down. Our study is one of survival. You have volunteered to be a part of something of vital importance, the scientific study of man and his environment. Are there any questions? Uh, yeah. You said volunteered. I, uh... I thought it was being paid. You're right, Mr. Reeves. You are a paid volunteer. We've accepted only people with no immediate family because there is less chance for embarrassment over confidential matters. And we must have the truth, all of it, not part. I believe you know my assistant, Dr. Portman. Excuse me, Dr. Roth, but there's an urgent call. Saxon Research Control. Saxon. It's a call I've been waiting for. I request one. Excuse me. I'll be just a moment. Saxon? Roth. How have you been? Fine, Dr. Roth. And you? <laughs> Waiting for your call. We're almost ready. Yes, well, that's what I'm calling you about. Your work has interested some very big people. Well, I'm glad to hear about that. These people would like some cooperation from you. But I thought it was understood that I was to be left alone until I could report my complete findings. Yes, I know. I told them that, but, but they insisted. Tell them my answer is no. I'd think twice before I'd give that answer, Roth. You need funds. I, I have your requisition right here in front of me now. Don't tie my hands. You know damn well why I'm out of funds. These people have power. They're not afraid to use it. The truth is, you know where they've got me. <laughs> you said it. I didn't. Fine. Music. Woman. <laughs> Why did I say woman? A cemetery shouldn't make me say that. Don't question your responses. Just relax and respond freely. Well, it doesn't make sense. It, uh... Please, Father Neil. Not Father. Not Father. I'm sorry, Reverend. Are you all right? Uh, yes. You were recalling something vividly. Was it pleasant or painful? Both. Well, let's try the screen again. Woman. I, uh, I thought it. I tried not to say it, and I... I'm going to let Dr. Roth take over at this point. I just want to see what he thinks. Aren't you, uh, considerably more comfortable with Dr. Roth? He's in accounting, but uh, I definitely would not disturb him right now. New funds? I think he's got them. Would uh, you take over the interview with Reverend Neal? Why, what's wrong? Well, he's uptight about something. We've really selected some strange subjects.
Sorry, I didn't mean to bother you, General. I know you have a lot on your mind, sir. Give me your weapon. If you wanted to protect yourself, which weapon would you choose? That's a P-38. I take it, you know. Take it. Now take a closer look at this. Very clever bugging device. <laughs> Testing one, two, three. <laughs> I think I changed my mind. I'd rather have this. In certain situations, uh, things, things like this can be real effective. That's the correct weapon, all right. But at best, it's only 1% effective. If you really want to know your enemy, you got to know what he's thinking, not what he's saying. If I could hear the music I heard when I was young, I wouldn't be out of step. Are you quoting someone? Yes. Ooh. Myself. One of my sermons. You feel you're out of step? Yes. Is it here or everywhere? If it's myself, then it, it's everywhere. Are you trying to get back? I, uh, I suppose so. I, I don't know. I, uh, maybe that's why I applied. I, uh, uh, at times, you have a speech impediment. Yes. This impediment, this uh, hesitation, is it from childhood? I don't know uh, what it was. I uh, can't explain it. I, uh, I, I just don't know. Maybe, maybe God knows I don't. Uh, Doctor, I don't think I'd better go on with this. I, uh, I don't think I'm a good subject. I, uh, I thought that it was going to be different. I, I'm not a good subject. Well, on the contrary, you're excellent, not perfect. Right. Doctor, uh, may I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah, it's your time. Do you ever pray? Often in my own way. Why? Well, I guess I don't want to take any unnecessary chances. Our attitude on that matter is uh, fairly close. What is my attitude? You know man exists. And you believe God exists. But you're not sure which one created the other.
Roth knows something no Mars didn't know. Anyway, in the land of the blind, a one-eyed man's a king. Nuts? Nothing. What the hell? Many leaves. I heard something. I, I want to lock on my door. I want to lock. Okay, Judy. You go back to sleep now. Is everything all right? Is there anything we can do? Did any of you hear anything before she screamed? No, no sleeping. Was well, she all right? Uh, and maybe there's something I could do to help. No, well, Dr. Portland's with her right now. You, uh, she just had a nightmare, that's all. You gentlemen go back to sleep. It's nothing. Yeah. Well, then, can I? Why did you lie, Reeves? I didn't lie. You lied, Reeves. What is the one word we have tried to impress upon you? What one word? Truth. Say it again. Truth. You've never been in jail? Reeves, you have a police record. You've also been in a reform school. What about the army? The, um... The army? You're a troublemaker there, too. What do you think? We are incompetent? You don't think we check things out? The truth, Reeves. Absolute accuracy. One lie can cause us a lot of trouble. Look, I, I didn't lie exactly. I was put inside a jail. But when I said I was never in jail, it was because I didn't do nothing. I was innocent. Have you ever been booked for theft? I never stole nothing in my life. But food. And that's not stealing if you're hungry enough. You're dismissed from the project. You gotta let me do this. Please. What you may have done in your life is of no great matter to us. The truth is everything. Everything. Now, do you completely understand this? Yeah. Are you pleased? Well, I'm satisfied, but old Ross is. Well, it's another change of D-Day. No, not necessarily. It just means we're going to go through every checkpoint and every phase again. What's bothering him? Everything. <laughs> That's impossible. This place gives me the all overs. Doctor's running around like a chicken with its head cut off. And last night, I know I wasn't dreaming. And these guards, they make me think of tombstones. It's like we were going to be buried or something. Not like we were. As if we were. Unlike is never followed by a complete predication. You better not let me in your room alone. Because I wouldn't just be touching you. And when I left, you wouldn't be screaming. You'd just smile. <laughs> a big smile. You shut your filthy mouth, Judd Reeves. Uh, I'll second that. Leave her alone, Reeves. And who's going to make me? You? Violence. Sweet violence, huh, human? 
You both stop it. The impulse scale. This is where the real danger lies. Feeding impulses into the upper and lower cortex of the brain can be dangerous. Carol, you'd be in there also. You're vulnerable. Biofeedback training will help me. The others. Well, that's why we're experimenting. Like another redaction of impulse feed on all stages? Yes, if you don't mind. Girl, get my phase three impulse breakdowns on my desk. Yes, sir. Are we ready to test the first patch in? We need more time, sir. I'm still worried about the fail-safe circuits. We can try it if you say so. Then try it. What the hell? Go to standby. Standby. Not responding. Check sections E. Sections E circuits not responding. But don't just stand there, Dr. Borland. Call engineering. Hold it. It's back. Dr. Roth's office. This is Williams. Engineer. Hold on. Engineering. Yes. We've checked out all the circuits in E cell. Everything seems to be okay. I'm going over next to. Hold on just a second. I think I've run across him. He's found something. First time I ever yelled at you. I know. How long did it take for you to forgive me? A few minutes or an hour or or have you forgiven me? I forgave you before it ever happened. Trees? Woods? No, I don't know. Yeah, I guess so. 
I mean, I'm not in love with them. Not like my father. My father really loved trees. He liked the woods, the shadows, walking. The first thing I clearly remember is a tree. It was enormous. And uh, my father was leaning back against it. His eyes were closed. Geez, I was like four. <laughs> what kind of tree? I don't remember. I don't remember anything about it except the, the trunk, how big it was. Mm. The, uh, the bark was smooth like a poplar. It was too dark for a poplar. He had, uh, he'd given me a knife. And I remember opening it, but I didn't cut on that tree. <laughs> I just stood there and thought about how long it would take me to cut it down with that knife. I clearly remember thinking that, uh... Did you, uh, get along well with your parents? Oh, my parents left me alone. I mean, uh, when I wrote poetry, my mother didn't sneak around and read it. <laughs> when I played football, my father didn't keep bragging to the world how good I was. <laughs> Were you good at the other one? Sure, sometimes I was good at both. <laughs> Do you know anything about the brain? Nope. Your brain has the strongest impulses of any subject we've tested. Is that good or bad? Either one. Nature doesn't make uh, moral judgments. It simply balances the books, I think. We're losing it. The computers are overriding us. Emergency. Emergency. All sections. About your father. I've lost total power twice. Why? Roth, I don't know. Could be anything. We're checking it out. You do that. What the hell is going on, Roth? I don't know. But I intend to find out. Computers have total control. Turning. CIC's impulse is to normal. It's up to them now. They have control. Why, why do they have to keep asking all those personal questions? To ascertain the truth, sweetheart. Well, what's that got to do with pollution and population explosion? You haven't been listening properly. See, the truth is everything. The truth will... Uh... Clear the water, vanish the smog, yeah. lower the birth rate, break down DDT and end with the world. Dr. Roth didn't say all that. Well, I can say all that. Why did you volunteer? I wanted to do something for my country. You what? <laughs> I wanted to do something for my country. Of course you did. That's because you have vision. And where there is no vision, the people perish. Now, each day in the E-Box represents five years of time. Now, you've all been briefed on a number of problems, discomforts, and possible dangers involved. Now, the population explosion is going to be simulated not by increasing the number of people in the box, but by decreasing the space. The walls will actually move inward toward the service module. Now, certain pollutants will be added to the area, and noise levels will fluctuate. Are any questions? Now, we'll be doing many things. We'll be measuring the tiniest electrical impulses of your brain, and we'll be sending impulses back into the box. You know, the magic of this computer, uh, 
enables us to formulate and insert into this experiment calculations that would have taken many great minds many years to perform. This may look like a very simple device. However, that's not the case. Now, Dr. Portland has taken this very simple device and developed for this project an impulse sensor which conducts to the computer every vital function of your body, like uh, blood pressure, heartbeat, and so on. As you know, Dr. Portland will be instructing you on rest, sleep, and exercise periods, all of which are very necessary. Are there any questions? Um, yeah. When, when it's hooked up in there, is it ever going to shock us? You shouldn't feel a thing. Dr. Morris, I've changed my mind. I, uh, I don't want to go. Why? It's, uh, it's just that I, uh, I'd feel lost without my collar. Dr. Roth? I think we can make an exception in this case. Thank you. They're ready to go into the e-box, General. Good. What are my orders now, sir? Stand by. As all of you know in your briefings, this safety device is simple. In the face of any emergency, anyone can just break the glass. That's all there is to it. Simple. But I'd like to underscore in your minds that the consequences can be far-reaching. Not of a major matter, this experiment will be immediately aborted, in a minor matter that you will receive no further money. How do you feel, Rick? Uh, much better now. Thank you. Yes, sir. Begin stage one brain probe procedure. Stage one only. Repeat, stage one only. Right, sir. This is CIC control. We have visual. Visual? Roger. Integrating audio MX4-5-2. Audio MX4-5-2, uh, roger. Effect T minus 20 and counting mark 10, roger. T minus 20, marking 10. Mark 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, integrate. Why don't you take a break? I could use one. But let's take a look at our children first. Hey. Okay. Let's take a look at service module camera two. Camera two. Hold on. Nothing. Camera two, operational and functioning. Stage one of operation is complete. The others. Roger. Negative. I can't be. Let's see. Damn it. Try Carol Station. There, hold it now. We got Carol again. Well, at least we're not completely blind. Shake it down and see if you can find out why the service module cameras won't work. I'm going to get some rest. Camera three.
cameras four and five. This is CIC control. We have control of service module cameras. Integrate cameras on 20 and counting. Mark 10. Roger. Cameras two through five in sequence. Marking five, four, three, two, one. Subject one in mode phase three. Integrate CIC circuit to probe status. Roger. Tape is rolling. Probe status, CIC circuit, integrate. Easy, easy. Reduce modulation by five. We have a sensitive subject here. Modulation minus five. Mark. We did. We did. Sleepy, I guess. I was thinking. About me? About my granddaddy. Somebody wrote a song about my granddaddy once. It was a ballad. And it told a story about this man who was poor. And he made a lot of money to him. Very little cheer. And he bought this mortuary and a pair of alligator shoes, and you'd go downtown and you'd meet these people who put him down like the banker, and you'd say, We have a good probe. Audio and visual clear. Monitoring subject one and four. Stop tape roll. One minute to zebra. Stand by. Roger. Tape roll stopped. One minute to zebra. Standing by. Stand by, service module camera three. Roger, camera three. We have subject two, interlock tapes, Integrate CIC probe status, mark 10, and counting. 10 and counting. Five, four, three, two, one. Mark and integrate. I don't quite understand it. It's, uh, uh, Ron's sleeping, and if it, uh, isn't too important, I'd rather not wake him. Well, go on. What is it? Well, the computer's kicked out a question here on subject number one, CIC NSC 25. It's a question of previous marriage, true or false. What do you make of it? Minnie Lee, our programming, she's number one. Mm, possibly impulse receiving. Let's ask her. Whatever you say, uh, should I get Ron? No, you can follow it through. It seems routine to me. Uh, here she is now. Did I do something? <laughs> no, Minnie Lee, just routine. 
Uh, Dr. Morris would like to ask you a question from the computer. Do you mind? I guess not. Uh, Minnie Lee, this is Dr. Morris. Were you ever married? No, Dr. Morris. I, I told you that before. I was never married. I don't know what it is. I don't know what I said to cause any trouble. I I've never been married. It was an old. I told you the truth. I I've never been married. When something is an old, it's like it ain't never happened before. My daddy said we're in the marriage. Portland? Yes. We got another one. Judd Reeves. Who the hell do you think you are, man? Morris? What is this, your version of truth or consequences? I assure you, Mr. West, that this is in line with the program. Dr. Morris is just following questions from the computer. What do you mean, calling me a liar? Judd. Listen, if you're trying to brainwash me, man, you're crazy. They tried that in the army, and, and they couldn't beat nothing out of me. Judd. Merriman was, was killed. He was killed, you scientific bird brain! You shove that up your computer, Morris. Or just come down here and shove it down your throat for you. No. I didn't kill him. He killed himself! John, calm down. Now listen, you just stay away from me, you scientific bitch. All right, John, that's enough. Oh, boy. John, this is what I've been waiting for. Yeah, calm down. 
Come on, Willie boy. Come on. I'm gonna smash that pretty face of yours. Judd. CSE control, emergency, emergency. All circuits overload. CIC circuits one through five. Roger, one through five. CIC circuits closed. Where's the oxygen? Max, there's no trouble there. Impulse ending status. Now we have to hold the impulse. We can't take another overload like that. Reduction inference is normal. The computer's normal. Everything's functional. Even the service module cameras are working. I don't understand it. There had to be an overload somewhere. Mars, shake the computer down and see if you... I'll be right back. I've just had five human beings go through unnecessary hell because of some kind of malfunction. We've checked everything on our end and with no results. Now, something is happening and it's not us. Now, I want to know and I want to know now. Do you understand? There is nothing I can do. Starting again. This is CIC control, subject three in mode phase three. Integrate CIC circuit to standby. Integrate T minus 20 and counting. Mark. CIC circuits, probe status standing by, marking 20 and counting. Let's go for a total brain probe on this subject. Yes, sir. I'll be right down. CIC circuit probe mode three, mark T, minus 10 and counting. Roger, mark T, minus 10, tape rolling. Six, five, four, three, two, one, integrate. strike you did. 
You sound like you don't believe in a personal God, do you? No. What? A minister? And you don't believe in God? I am talking about a personal God. Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding you. St. Peter only denied him three times. I am speaking about a personal God. He does not exist. So let's just let him go at that, okay? shall know my sins. You are not God. You can't do it to me. I, uh... A man who dares enter the infinite must be willing to suffer the consequence. God's wrath shall fall on your head. You and your kind. I do not have to suffer this blasphemy. I, uh, a man has a right to hide his innermost thoughts from mere mortal men. Uh, God is my witness. My sins are between God and me. I don't have to put up with this. I want out. You hear? God in heaven. I wanna no, no. You fool! Oh. Saxon, you're killing these people. You're going to kill them unless you open those doors. Do you understand? I've lost all control. Damn machine has gone berserk. The information you want is classified, and you're not cleared for national security control secrets. So you listen to me and you listen well. I'm not going to have the death of five people on my hands. Emergency. Emergency. Should be opening. Negative. The subject has activated failsafe. Computers have total control. Failsafe? It's gotta work. Dr. Quill and I designed it. Negative readout. Failsafe not responding. Judd, it's all right. They'll get us out. Not with my crummy luck, they won't. I'm gonna die, and I know it. Take it easy. The hell you say? I know I'm gonna die, and so are you, Judd. We're not gonna die. Not if we don't want to. It's that simple. So it's dying.
unbearable, impulse converted. It actually converts brain impulses into exact pictures of thought, audio and visual. Jesus. Mortality. You stupid fools. No man, no human ever believes they're going to die. That's a question of faith. That's, that's the paradox of mankind. No one really believes they'll ever die. Don't you understand? Faith, human faith to a computer doesn't compute. Yes. We understand that. Now. We made a mistake. No! Saxon of the computer lab. I'm coming over. What? I am sorry, sir, but, uh, You've been confined to the computer room until further notice. Those people are dying down there. But we have our orders. Orders? Get out of my way! I'm very sorry, sir. But would you go back into the room? Now? Shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus, cut that babbling. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Stop it. Stop it, Merriman. Leadeth me beside the still water. Rolling. Rolling. Don't answer me. Shut it's up, Merriman. He's losing it. He thinks Reverend Neal is Lieutenant Merriman. Through the valley. The shadow of death. Death since boot boy. I will fear no evil. Do you hear me? I'll kill you! Roth, we've got to get those people out of there. We've got to stop this. We've got to stop it! Down on his way head with oil. So, That's what you've been telling us, huh, Lieutenant? We're all killing machines! My cup runneth over. Well, you forgot Surely something. goodness and mercy shall follow me. We're also Hold it, dying machine! <laughs> And I shall be my God. in the house of the Lord. You're gonna die first, you bastard! Forever. You're gonna die first! Die, you bastard! Die! Todd, for God's sake! Get away from me! Get away! God! Ready? 
reference? In that service module, we could get them out of there. Willie, Willie, service module. You've got to get inside. You've got to break into the service module. Scientific bastard. Get to the hatch. We can break out that one. Let's go. I'm sorry, sir, but we have orders not to let anyone out of this room. I'm overriding those orders. But you don't have that authority. What do you mean? I'm the head of this project. I order you to let us pass. But my orders don't come from you or this project. Now don't move. Hold it. Hold it. Will anybody move? Let's go. This, sir. This won't be easy to cover up. Winds reached a velocity of 80 miles per hour. The damage was estimated to be more than $1 million. And this just in, the National Environmental Control Center reports that Dr. Roland Roth, world famous authority on the human brain, was electrocuted along with six others when a patient broke from an experimental therapy area ripped through a protective panel and exposed himself and the other victims to 500,000 volts of electricity. Along with Dr. Roth, the dead include his two assistants, Dr. Carol Portland, Dr. Elton Morris, three other patients, and Willard West, a patient who apparently went berserk during a routine experiment, shouting, I can't die, I am immortal, I am God. 
This is Cornell Wood. That's tonight's late news. Good night. That was a good news release, General. Very effective. How did you handle Saxon? He was transferred. Oh, the machine works. That's the important thing. And this is only the beginning. But I suggest you get it out of there within the next 24 hours. It'll be out. And you understand, no matter what happens, I don't know about anything except the environmental tests. 